Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you're enjoying this long holiday weekend. You know I'm in training for tomorrow, right? Yes, because... 24 hour marathon of... Independence Day. The, the best movie ever made. In my opinion. <laughs> in this house, that rule stands. <laughs> you guys need to make this an important part of your July 4th celebration. Yes, you need to watch this movie at least twice tomorrow. Yeah, I'll probably watch it five times. It'll just be on all day. Yeah, she's yeah. walking in the room. There it is. It makes you happy. Yeah, and she knows every line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the studio this week, it's been very quiet. Parker Girls number one is at the printer, and Terry's all about sketching for San Diego now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike and I spent some time at the warehouse getting all the books pulled and ready to ship. Our local comic shop, Bedrock City, takes our books uh, is going to take our books this year for us, which is so great. And by the way, that's a really great comic shop. Yes, it is. If you are, and they uh, fulfill orders online. So anywhere in the country, they have these rare books too. You can get that golden age book you always wanted, and they'll get you a good copy and get it to you. Are they paying us a percentage for giving them a little? Yes, they bought me a free out. Dr. Pepper for that. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, you know what? Another great thing in their parking lot. There's a little drive through called Hawaiian Brothers, and they have Dole Whips there. Yes. And if you've been to Hawaii and gotten addicted to Dole Whips, this is a big deal. Yeah. So they're great. Yeah. Okay. I'll be pulling art this week, and then off we go in less than two weeks to San Diego. We haven't been in three years. Wow. This is going to be an adventure 2019. again. Yeah. It'll be like the first time we ever went. You know, we just don't know what to expect. We kind of know, but we really don't know. We know. We know, we know exactly what to expect. Well, it'll be a familiar uh, area, but who knows what it'll be like this year. So that's all the excitement I have this week. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Uh, now that I've finished Parker Girls, I am all about the sketching. Um, so because that's on my mind, I, th I thought I would do an art video about that as well, about how I sketch. Do you want to hear about it? Do I want to hear about it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do a, a question first, or should I tell you Let's about Let's do that? a question. Okay. Are you ready for the hot seat? Yes. Okay. This is from Michael Calling West, and I think this is a great, fun question. In the Terryverse, if all your characters got together and battled, who would win? Top five deaths? He says, I'm thinking Rachel wins, Kachu bites it, David bites it. Terryverse Secret Wars. <laughs> I this would think, be so cool. I think Zoe would win. Either that or Francine. Zoe is the dark horse for sure. Yeah. We must not underestimate the little warrior. Um, Francine is, uh, is wily. Francine is tougher than yes. uh, her cooking might suggest. <laughs> so, but right away, Freddie goes. Oh, first to fall. He, he would be the loudest up front and first of all. Yeah, yeah Freddie for sure. Uh, and, and Chuck will be there to watch him fall. Freddie, don't do that. Yeah. David um, David goes trying to save Kachu. Oh, that's that was a poignant moment in the big battle. Yeah. <laughs> Can you picture this, you know, with 100 characters all drawn by George Perez? Yeah. Wouldn't that be magnificent? It like would. one of his great, huge splash pages uh -huh. he was so good for. Oh, man, that would be so cool. This was a very good suggestion. Yeah, this is a great question. You guys put your answers up on, on the uh, comments. Okay, who, who wins, who loses in the great big uh, battle of the Terryverse? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I do too. Thank you, Michael. Okay, I'm going to have to check my crops. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you're growing watermelon and cantaloupe. Yeah. How is that going? It's... How many watermelons do we have? Oh, thousands. Mm, theoretically. In my, in my dreams. In your dreams. I have a beautiful vine. Yeah. It, it's taking over the yard. Looks like a triffid. But, and lots of blossoms, but little bitty tiny watermelons. But I appreciate people answering mm -hmm. in the comments. Yes, thank you. And I have started watering more, so I'm hoping that will, will help. We're going to water a lot and maybe even get a totally new fruit. Who knows? Well, I doubt that. You could grow a cat. So that's me. Okay. I'll keep you posted to see how things are going. Watermelons and cantaloupes. Stay tuned. 
for all I've put into this, I could have bought a watermelon and cantaloupe farm <laughs> yeah, by now. That's how it works. <laughs> I mean, that really is how it works. It's all, it, this is about something different. It's about knowing that you could survive on an island if you had a ton of water and a bunch of uh, miracle Grow and the right tools. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, that's it for me. So, what do you, and you're going to draw, you're going to do some sketching. Well, uh, we had a great suggestion from someone about doing a little more explanation of the quick sketches, where you're just doing uh, simple uh, outlines. And it's very, uh, it's a very good thing to be doing to understand how to do the more complex sketches. So, instead of just watching me do my uh, typical sketching, I thought, why don't we also pull in three masters, three comic book art masters, and look at their doodles and their sketches and see what we can learn from them. So to figure out who's going to be our three guest stars today and look at their sketching. Hint, Maybe. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Maybe, you never know. Uh, Robin's art doodle is in the first issue of Parker Girls, by the way. She came in and to get me started doodled on one of the pages and I kept the doodle and it's in the book. So see if you can find it. Oh, you kept that in there? I kept that oh, in there. It's cool. in the book. All right, meet me here. Okay, so I got a request from Mark Castillo Guzman who's been watching the videos and he said, do a video on gestures, the simple straightforward kind with the bean figure and the limbs. And it, it's really helpful to look at figures uh, when you get all the details out of the way and just look at what did the basic figure do to get the message across even before you put any details on there. No clothes, no belts, shoes, hair, uh, even, not even any detail in the, in the face, just the slightest little nuance. And you've got basically half the work done right there. And the rest of it is the fun part. You know, putting on the clothing that you want or the, the expressions and all that. So this is worth knowing. Um, this is for my style in the comic style, but it also is a really good basis for any cartooning. Um, I mean, it's real easy to see, I guess, the bean figures in that, right? So let's see, where did my paper go? Oh, it's over here. If you take, like, say, this one, obviously. Head forward, body bent back, and then the legs up like this. Those are the adventure legs. This is the same you would use to jump over something in the playground or whatever. Uh, normally, if you're jumping, you would have your arms up like that. But in this case, it's she's being uh, squirted by a water hose, I think. Um, that was for a cover for Amelia Rules. It's a wonderful YA book. Anyway, so there's, you know, if somebody's squirting the water hose at you. Um, this simple thing here, see how they're leaning towards each other? So I'm looking at cartoon figures right now, but guys, this could easily be um, Batman and Selena Kyle. Um, all you have to do is at least start with the right pose. Um, the fact that it's cartoony makes it faster and cuter, but you could easily turn this little thing right here into uh, Selena. Like that. One hip up. You always have the counter lever uh, shoulder. like that, and uh, considering it's Batman and Selena, this could be a pair of handcuffs for all I know. <laughs> and Batman, great big, huge, monstrous barrel chest. And those dancer swaying legs. I have never seen Batman make this pose, ever. That's not a Batman pose, but if there's handcuffs involved, who knows? And all you have to do is put horns on it, you got Batman. <laughs> but I mean, see how working in these cartooning modes preps you for 
uh, the bigger drawings, the more serious drawings. So whatever your mode is, whether you want to be a cartoonist or a cartoonist who pretends to draw Batman, um, working in these simple bean figures really helps. Okay, let me show you um, somebody who's much better than me at all this. Uh, let's go through three masters and take a look at some of their figures and um, start with Joseph Campbell, Jeff Scott Campbell. Joseph Campbell. <laughs> I just invoked uh, the hero's journey. Okay, Jeff Campbell. Um, let's pick one. Oh, well, let's start at the beginning. The classic uh, good girl pose right here. How do you get that? You start off with the arch back. Because really what you're doing is presenting the butt, aren't you? I mean, that's exactly what that is. Here, look at the butt. So the butt goes up. It's like raising your hand, you raise the butt. If you're gonna draw this stuff, be honest about it. What is it you're trying to do? Well, I'm trying to get that butt as high as I can. <laughs> okay, why do the legs go this way. He's exaggerating, but why does it, they go this way instead of straight down? Because if they went straight down, there's nothing holding this body up. She would have to have a hand on something. But she's freestanding like a figurine. So you put the feet right under the middle of the body like that. So Jeff is exaggerating, but it works. It looks right and it works. In real life, the feet would probably go right here at the pivot joint at the top of the hip. And then you would have to compromise a little bit here and be a little more upright like that. But it's, isn't it nice to be able to work this out in bean figure instead of doing a complicated, full rendered drawing and then it just doesn't look right and you're erasing and don't do erase, erase, fix, erase, fix. No, don't do that. Do it while you figure, he figured it out right here. He tried it straight up and down. That's not gonna look right. Then he tried it like this and he thought, well, that's better, I'll go with that. And then if you actually look right here, he went with this a bit of a compromise on the final big drawing. Um, let's pick another one, that's hard. That's not one you might volunteer to draw anytime by yourself, but this is a pose that you actually see people doing all the time, either outside the building on a break or um, in a Starbucks listening to their friends at the table. Again, head is in front of the body. See that? So, and that tilt of that face has a lot to do with the attitude. Tilt, not up and down, tilt. Tilt it, Terry. Come on, you can do it. Three-quarter eye over there, quarter eye there, more tilt. There, there's the tilt. That's too much tilt, Terry. Back off, back off. <laughs> Closer to that. And you got this kind of like a, well, I guess it is Peter Pan. Looks like um, Tinkerbell going on there with the fairy thing. And yes, uh, your thigh can get all the way up there if you have long legs. The, uh, one of the things that people may not mention when they're doing this is that they see, even though they look like they're just drawing simple forms, they actually see all kinds of cues. And when they see the cue, they know what to do. Um, I'll show you where they are. Um, the uh, hinge point on the neck right here, that hinge point actually does work. The neck and then the head can go pivot on that. Um, I'll tell you something cool about this neck here in a second. Um, then the shoulder coming up, it's a, it's a way of like hugging yourself, like bringing your own hoodie up. Your shoulders are your hoodie. 
you pull your shoulders up and put your head down into your shoulders, it's kind of a self-comforting uh, mode. So this right here already invokes a uh, quiet, more of a personal moment. Um, it's not like standing up straight with your arm, uh, shoulders back ready for a challenge. This is the opposite of that. So it starts with the shoulder attitude and the shoulder comes up like that. And then see the very little distance between the jaw and the shoulder. You would you would be certainly going for that over here. Okay, um, right there. That's how many times will you have drawn that in every other pose? You know that that's where the body goes. There's a, a little line right in there, and then the line for the chest starts right there. Um, and then the uh, sc scalpula, is that how you say it? The, uh, there's the shoulder, and then there is the shoulder blade right in there, and then there is the spine. And the spine doesn't bend evenly. There is some sort of a, like a, a thing out like that where it comes in, and then it's the rest of the spine, and then the hips take over right in there, the hips. You realize I'm drawing. <laughs> I shouldn't be penciling on this book. Um, I just realized I'm so used to just doing that. What is this? This is like from at least 10 years or so ago. I bet this is not. That, 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 this may be a collector's item. Um, I got it at a uh, San Diego Comic Con a long time ago from Jeff. Uh, he was unboxing them, and I happened to be walking by, and I grabbed both of them. This one and another one. Okay, so uh, the leg right there, and he even gestured where the muscle is right there. Like that. Um, the point of the elbow, you know that very well from all your other anatomy drawing. The muscle that's on the outside of that arm, we talked about that muscle last week. Um, so you're seeing all these cues, and you're going, oh, okay, there it is, and here's where I want, hey, where's here you want, here is where he wants me to put it today, like that, knuckles, like that. Um, the beautiful arc, one of the prettiest arcs in all of nature is that thigh arc right there. So long. Do you like my sound effects? And then the other thigh arc going this way, and then again, the, the muscle and the line there. And that line actually almost kind of comes around if you want to exaggerate it. There. So the rest is details on the face and the costume like that and resting fairy wings and everything else. Um, thank you, Jeff. So Jeff has, this is a wonderful sketchbook full of these things. And this may not seem like body language, but he is working through the symmetry and you need to get the symmetry right. You need to figure out your um, your lengths. Uh, Jeff goes for a taller lengths. Um, you need to, f and then how you're going to bend it. Um, so the reason why I'm pointing this out on Jeff is because I'm going to compare this to two other masters. Um, so we have our Jeff drawing. We did two Jeff drawings. Okay, let's get into somebody who's a little wilder. Brian, St Brian Stelfreeze. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on. Brian can do it all. Um, and if you look through here, this is another uh, wonderful sketchbook that I picked up at San Diego one year. Look at the poses. I mean, that's not your usual stuff right there. Even here, this is a common uh, lay on your side. He changed it to where she's, how can you, have you ever seen a pose where the woman is laying on her side and she's a threat? There you go. That woman's dangerous. Woman of action, dangerous. Um, okay, we're not here just to show off the beautiful drawings. We'll just find one of Bryant's, again, the shoulder hug, the self hug, uh, beautiful portrait of Elizabeth Montgomery. Um, even here, 
in the spirit drawing. Brian has done an incredible attitude, a body language attitude there. Let's see if I can do that here. Um, the cool thing about this is that the shoulders are coming forward, but they're not sloped. This is actually a common pose in 1940s movies where this kind of book came from. Uh, they lean against the wall in the newspaper office and exchange quips with the editor and the challenges and the insults were thrown out and the newsman goes back out like a, a warrior of the streets and gets the story, gets the truth out of all these people that don't want to tell the truth. Look at that. Look how Brian put the shoulder pad up above the real shoulder. How cool is that? How smart is that? You know these old suits had shoulder pads. Um, and then he does the folds just right. So when, when the arm is coming out like this, the uh, wrinkle goes up, and then this part right here goes out that way. And that way, everything is coming around. Knuckles on the hip. Okay. He has uh, shoulders there, so the hips are going to go like this. They're not as pronounced. Of course, these are square hips, so they're not as pronounced as Selena Kyle. So the point, the, the point here is look at where the gravity goes. And the gravity goes on the outside foot. And then... Brian has this, this is hard to draw down here. And Brian has him firmly planted on the ground. You know exactly where all this weight is going. All, um, I would guess the spirit weighs, what do you think? Like 623 pounds? All 623 pounds on that one ankle. This ankle's taking a break. <laughs> I'm a bad guesser at weight. And then this space right here, uh, let's be honest, there's a gap right there. And in that gap hangs his big spirit. And then, then the inside of the thigh right there. So there is a muscle right there, and then that long top muscle there, and then the inside muscle there. Don't let that fool you. And then the back muscle there. Da da da. Some, something's going on in here. I don't know what it is. I haven't taken that class yet. And then he's got his arm back like this, coming forward like this, and he's holding a massive tool which could have either been this wrench or Deadpool. He's a tool. Okay. And I didn't start that fight. Deadpool said, said it first. Okay, that's kind of the basic pose that Brian got here. It's very cool. He has a ton of correct details inside that uh, old school cartoony um, thing. Um, you can picture drawing this after we drew the Tinkerbell. What about this? Oh my God, look at that perspective. Brian goes for it. Okay, here we go. Um, here's the torso hidden way back in here. This wonderful inking um, is really gives you a lot of optical illusions like an old um, psychedelic poster but when the kind, the kind that were black and white, people in, back in the 60s, your parents and grandparents got high and um, smoked and stared at these posters on the wall and tried to make them out. Those artists were famous, the guys who did that. Okay, what's tricky here is that you're basically drawing the Iron Giant. We're on the ground and we are looking up at this, just picture it like a water tower. Yeah? Okay, God, Brian, what a pose. Jeepers creepers. There, <laughs> how fricking cool is that? I almost, I almost got carried away. Um, okay, that is so darn cool. 
Iron Giant. We're on the ground looking up at a water tower or a giant, a uh, 50-foot woman, and that's the pose you take. But we could also simply be the spirit lying on the ground, and you have this dominatrix standing over you in the warehouse with the water dripping from the leaking pipes and all that. And uh, you're, this person thinks you're about two minutes away from dying. Uh, she's going to make sure of it. So how are you going to get out of this jam? Okay. Um, See that? That's important. It didn't come straight up like this. It's more of realistic. Um, again, Terry, don't draw on Brian's sketchbook. He doesn't need your help. Um, and then pointing that way. And basically rib cage, insinuating a rib cage that's in there. And then this is muscle fat, bone, bones and muscle, bones and muscle, they get longer. See the proportion of that to that? You get that proportion here because this hand is coming at you. Look, see like that versus that, that versus that. That's what's going on there. Instead of being straight down, it's more like this. And there's the forearm. See how they're equal there? But then look how short the upper arm is versus the lower arm. Equal, lower, uh, shorter upper arm. Um, so that's what you're trying to do with that. You can just do it with your pencil and just see it. Um, the curving spine that we took so much care to draw on Tinkerbell. Um, this is just fun detail stuff here with the clothing. The hip out, the same hip we threw out um, with the other drawings. And then as they say here, the Botox, and then muscle. So all that anatomy stuff that people drill into you, and even I've drilled it into you in my lessons, this is where you get to have fun with it. Like, okay, you know there's the bone, you know that uh, the hip thing is going on in there, and then there's there's the bone, right? We know that we know that's in there. Um, all we want to see is the cool stuff, and then the muscle. Very cool, Brian. I mean, I've never seen this pose before, so that's that's getting into something a little different than the usual like Spider-Man bend straight run poses. Okay, that is wonderful and fun and eccentric, but it's actually uh, easier to get this to work than this more subtle stuff. Let's go to the master of subtle. Uh, my Alex Ross sketchbook. Okay, this one I got in 2010 at Chicago, uh, Alex's hometown. And you would expect to see a bunch of this, profiles and, and portraits and all that. But when you open it up, there's a lot of things like this in here where look at the different body language on every single person. The trick is they're all standing straight up. So what are you going to do? Just draw a bunch of bowling pins, all the same figure standing straight up? No. Okay, so now you're going to try to draw each of them with a personality. Like, look at the difference in personality between her and her. Whoever these crazy people are, I, I have no idea. This is clearly some sort of a, uh, I don't know, she's got a little spiky up there. Uh, maybe some people know who she is. I got this fella here. Maybe he has his own comic. I don't know these guys. I don't know. Uh, let's, for now, let's just call them... Uh, Superwoman and Robin and Batgirl, just as operating names. Okay, Batgirl. Again, head is at an angle. It's not straight, is it? See the angle on the outside of the head? Like that. And that, uh, right off the bat, that implies attitude. It's like you said something dumb, and she cocks her head and goes... Really? 
I, I, I see that I know because I see this look a lot. <laughs> so one shoulder is front and one shoulder is back. And I can't see it in there, but because we know how the body works, we know that what's going on here looks something like this. My head is too far back. It's so important to get that head uh, hinged correctly on the be somewhere around in there guys I don't want to get bogged down into that drawing the face but it's something like that and then there's actually it's it's not like this guys it actually is the neck going straight down and there's you can see the top edge of the shoulder up in here there's the top of the shoulder if she was wearing lapels on a suit you would see it that's how to think about it okay and that way, it's important because um, if you if you didn't have that there, you look like you're made a much lower standpoint. Now you're eye to eye with them. That's not the case. You're actually a little. You're actually taller than your viewpoint is above her, so you're going to see the top of her shoulder, just like she's. You know, you roll your viewpoint came up, and you're going to see the top of the shoulder. There's the shoulder when you straight on, you get up. So that's what you're trying to do. And that's part of the beauty of the, of the pose because that allows, it changes everything. It's now when you come down here, you're gonna get stronger lines under here. And then it gets even more so as you get down in here, the belt hangs, And again, there's going to be a, which leg is holding the body weight on this drawing? It's going to be that outside leg. You learn that from the spirit. So this is the leg that's going to be like this. Why would she stand like that? Have you ever seen anybody else stand like that? You know, like in a family portrait or whatever. Uh, one of the reasons people, these she would stand like that is because uh, she's probably used to it from uh, confronting uh, threats and always keeping one hand back ready with whatever's in the belt back then there. I would imagine it's something maybe, it's maybe a taser right next to a pencil. So if there's a threat, she pulls out the taser. If there's no threat, she pulls out a pencil and, and draws you. <laughs> That's my naive idea. Uh, and it's totally different from her where she's standing straight up and arcing the back just out of pride. And this one, we do see the shoulder straight. She must be taller. Is she taller? Yes, she is. Look how much taller she is. Um, that's the kind of accuracy you see in a master of portraiture like this. Um, our, obviously, our point of view is here because we're looking up at American woman. She's six feet, which would work because I'm probably 5'10". So I would be looking up at American woman. I'm looking for a crazy pose here from Alex. Um, oh, here's one. Who is that? I have no idea. That could be anybody. The mighty Samson origin. Okay, so that's Samson jumping up. Can you see that? It's really small. Okay. Now we're doing the opposite of where we... Well, no, we were looking up at... The Catwoman lady. But this is a whole different thing here. I started with the body torso, knew that I was looking up through it, and I went straight to the thigh, and then the shortened uh, lower leg, and then the other leg, and now I go to the shoulder hinging right there, and the shoulder, the upper arm is coming at us. That's really complicates it, makes it hard. And then the other arm shoulders back in here and it comes up and then up and it's actually going away. My gosh, Alex, <laughs> you made every single limb is foreshortened. 
This is so, this is so incredibly hard. Okay, here's what he did. He went full figure like this, the body like that. So now you're looking up at it like a barrel. Then at the legs, you can see the full length, well, sort of the full length. That's actually foreshortened too. So if you chop these things up, you would see you would see the circle of the chop in this in this uh, angle. Okay, now this shoulder and then the other shoulders down in here and that forearm, I mean that the upper part of the arm is right there and then like that and then the other arm is going away not up away so there to there and then the hand is the hand is foreshortened as well and then there's a head in there somewhere guys i mean god that's that's hard every single thing was foreshortened um, one important thing here, and if you follow wrestling or boxing or anything, you know that when you hit, um, you when you're going to punch somebody, you want a straight arm right here. Um, there's actually videos of young people uh, hitting stuff, and they're they're bending their wrists and stuff like that. No, uh, one bone as if it's all grafted and it doesn't flex. That way you get the full hammer and you get the full force of the arm, not just like I just hit you with my with the flick of a wrist, it's like that. And I'm pointing that out because look, Alex drew it that way. And when Alex draws somebody punching something, that wrist is straight and he, that, somebody gets the full body weight behind that punch. Just little things like that are fun to know. Okay, so there you go. Uh, kind of going through the body language of the sketchbooks of three masters. Um, you might want to try it at home and uh, you know when you run out of ideas for doodling and quick sketches um, go through the sketchbooks of the masters and start looking at what they're doing by retracing their their drawings like that by going through and doing them yourself you begin to see those little details that they add in there you know and you begin to think see what they think about and what they prioritize even in a simple drawing if they only had 20 seconds to draw something what did they think is so important that would actually even be in that first 20 seconds? And it gives you some insight into the rest of the drawing process. Um, anyway, that's my suggestion. Um, so I hope it helps. See you next week.